All right, guys, so today I'm going to go over the drip irrigation data sheet. <clears throat> it has come to my attention that uh, drip irrigation companies are no longer wanting to do designs for us. So when we have to do them on our own, what do we do? Well, luckily, a long time ago, 1979, someone came up with data sheets. And we have a data sheet for every practice we do. So uh, this will be the first of, I think, eight data sheets I'll go through. To show you guys how to design something using the data sheet so um, like I told you guys all before when I first started if you gave me a data sheet and it had enough information on there including a sketch the only thing you need to provide me for submittal would be the data sheet plus the cover sheet and the layout so there's no excuse to not get designs done quicker uh, speaking on my own part um, because when we go out in the field, we should be able to go and take this data sheet, let's just say we have a hoop house, and fill it out as we're visiting the site. So this is something that I'm going to try to do um, better and uh, hopefully get designs whipped out quicker. So we're going to start from the top. Uh, first of all, I want to give special recognition to um, the Hernandez Field Office. They're the ones that helped me with filling this out. Not many of you know this, but my irrigation background is my Achilles heel, so I need all the help I can get. So thank you, David and Tomas, for helping me fill this out. So on the drip irrigation data sheet, you're going to put in your conservation district, your field office, cooperator location, and then your CIN numbers and your field numbers. In this case, we're going to just going to do a typical high tunnel, 30 by 72. That's a typical size. And they put a lot of these up in Hernandez. 30 by 72 comes out to 0 0.05 acres. You'll fill out your resource area, your soil unit, and your description of soils. Get that from the um, irrigation guide. We're going to be designing a vegetable for vegetables. The associated acres for the vegetables. Now if you had a high tunnel with multiple crops in it, you'd put the multiple crops and their associated acres, the total. In this case, we're going to be coming out of a well and going to a hose bib, so the source of supply is a well. Um, uh, other sources could be a reservoir. Um, and you could even do it out of a stream, I guess. Never have done it, but I guess it's an option. So if you're doing it out of a stream, if you're doing it out of a well, um, the measured capacity, it's not applicable because we're coming out of a hose bib and we're going to a little hoop house. Um, now if you had 20, 30, 40 acres of, of, of a, not a high tunnel, but of a drip irrigation system, then you would need to measure the capacity or just find it from the well log. Get the static level and the pumping lift, um, maximum pumping lift. Oh, that's something you'd figure out. That's nothing on this video we're going to talk about. Um, the so quality of the water is good. Water quality is a important thing with drip irrigation because the emitters, they can get clogged. Um, even if you have a filter, the filter, if you really have bad water, the filter can get dirty over and over and then you have to clean it more than once. In Fort Sumner, had a producer and that was his complaint. He had a hose bib going to a filter and then a pressure reducer. The filter kept getting dirty, so he had to keep cleaning it over and over. So it's just something to go over with your producer during uh, O&M. The distance from the, from the hose bib to the hoop house is 50 feet. And the type of power to be used is electric because there's a submersible pump in the well, and that's what's providing the... Um, the power to get the water to the hose bib. So now we have a typical drawing, um, not to scale. If it is to scale, just say what the one inch equals. In this case, we got our 72 by 30 hoop house. We got one, two, three, four, five laterals, and each lateral has three hoses. And uh, here's, here's where it says existing frost hydrant right here. And from here, 
to the end of the line is 20 plus 30, 50 feet. And it says here we have an existing well, two inch PVC schedule 40 from here to here. So, and then here we have some shutoff valves at each lateral. Uh, inch and a half PE 34800 PSI is what you typically use for this for the T-tape. Um, I'm sorry for the, the pipe. And then the T-tape is 5 8 inch and 8 inch emitter spacing. We'll get to that in a bit. So this is a simple drawing but it tells me a lot and this would suffice for a quote unquote design drawing. So this is page two of the data sheet. Page three of the data sheet, we go over calculations. The first thing, line item, is acres. 0 0.05 acres is what we got from the front of the sheet for 72 by 30. The canopy diameter, we're talking about vegetables, so the canopy diameter of a vegetable, we just put one, so one foot. The peak daily consumptive use you're gonna get from the irrigation guide, and for Hernandez, it's 0.2. So use per your area. The tree spacing is eight inches, um, which converts to 0 0.667, because it has to be in feet squared, 0 0.667 equals eight inches. Time, and then you square it, you get 0.44 feet squared. So this is important because basically, if you're watering trees versus, versus vegetables, um, Spacing is important because you need to know how many emitters you're going to have there. Um, if you have a tree, it's going to have a larger um, canopy, therefore you're going to have to have more emitters. And I was told you want to have at least three emitters for a, an orchard. So for a little vegetable, we're just going to have one, and we're going to um, the spacing on the trees are going to be eight inches. Now. I was also told that the tree spacing could be anywhere from 8 to 18 inches, um, which based off the wetted, which is based off the wetted parameter. So, if you drop water in an 8-inch spacing interval of plants, the wetted parameter is going to be um, greater because the spacing is closer. But if you space them 18 inches versus 8 inches. Whenever you water something that's spaced 18 inches from the next plant, the water is, may not reach the canopy area of the next one. So by having them closer, it just makes sure that you're having enough water between each plant. So eight inches for vegetables is a good rule of thumb. The system efficiency is max is 90, so we just put 0.9. The canopy area, pi r squared, so you just put multiply pi times the radius squared. The radius is 0.667 divided by 2, that's that, comes out to 0.35 squared. The percent area is line 6 divided by line 4, and it comes out to 0.8. Um, percent area is still something that I didn't, it has to do with the canopy area, and if you're dividing 6 by 4, it just goes to show the importance of spacing for vegetables versus trees. Um, I, that's the best I could do on that. Uh, adjusted consumptive use in inches per day is going to be line 3 divided by line 5. So 0.2 divided by 0.9 and you get 0.18. Gallons per day per tree is this formula, 0.623 times line 6. 0.35 times line 8, 0.18 times divided by L5 comes to 0 0.04 gallons per day per tree, or in this case, 0 0.04 gallons per day per vegetable. It's going to have you're going to have drastic difference in numbers relative to a tree. Lateral movement radius. This comes out. This is one foot. So this was a question I had for Hernandez office and. Basically, lateral movement, what does that mean? So if you have a tree or a little vegetable here, and you have a little vegetable here, there's the, there's the stem of the vegetables. When you water, and then there's another one. When you water this vegetable, that one, and that one with drip, 
the water is going to percolate out so far. That's the lateral movement. So we want the lateral movement of the water to go out one foot outside of where the stem's at. Just a rule of thumb. <clears throat> the area of lateral movement is going to be pi r squared. R is going to be 1 divided by 2, so 0.5. 3.14 times 0.5 squared, and then you get 0.785 feet squared. The number of emitters is L6, 0.35 feet squared, divided by L11, 0.785. Comes out to 0.45. You can't have 0.45 of an emitter, so we just round it to one. So use one emitter per plant. Um, GPS, G, gallons per hour per emitter is 0.267. That's going to come from your specifications on your drip tape. So in this case, they use the John Deere specifications, which comes out to 0.004477 gallons per minute per emitter. You multiply that by 60 and you get your 0.267. So then gallons per hour per tree is L12 times L13. So 1 times 0.267 gives you that. Hours per day of operation is going to be 9, L9 divided by L14. So 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.6267 comes out to 0.15. So that's hours, multiply it by 60, and you get 9 minutes. Max lateral length is only going to be 30, 72 feet long. Uh, from your T-tape John Deere, um, specs 5 8 inch will be the standard number of plants is going to be 72 feet divided by uh, 0 0.667 which came from the tree spacing so when you divide the 72 feet by the tree spacing you're going to get 108 plants per lateral and then um, lateral spacing is 1.25 feet um, oh shoot where did that come from that was the spacing between each of the laterals is three one two three uh, emitters capacity once again comes from dividing multiplying what John Deere has per their emitter times 60 which is because it's in gallons per minute to get gallons per hour total number of laterals is 15 in this case, they're going to operate all laterals simultaneous, so 15. The design capacity is 0.267 GPH per emitters times 108 emitters. Total amount of gallons per hour is 28.8 per lateral. And they converted that to GPM, so 0.48 GPM per lateral. If you multiply 15 laterals times um, 0.48 GPM per lateral, you get 7.2 GPM. Those are your total capacity. This stuff is very minimal. Your friction loss in the lateral, your multiple outlet factor, um, elevation difference, there's no elevation difference between the hose bib and here. If there is, you can take it into consideration. Um, but this stuff is all calculated within the John Deere specs, if you're using John Deere specs. So this, these items right here are kind of like fine print. Um, they're, they're integrated into the calculation. So if you see an asterisk next to um, something within the specs, like the T-tape or a sprinkler, you can look further into the asterisks and see what is integrated. It's kind of like our alfalfa valves chart. The alfalfa valve chart, if you guys have used it, <coughs> whenever you figure out the total amount of CFS going through a 12-inch alfalfa valve and then the correlating friction loss, if you look on the bottom of that chart, it says that the T and the losses in the line are already integrated into the calculations on that spreadsheet. So that's the same little thing. The emitter pressure is 8 PSI, so you'll find that from John Deere. Um, pressure at the main will be 12. 
Um, so, uh, let's see, proposed depth. There's no depth of cover. You're going to be um, using between what was the, what was the total on there? Let me see. Uh, Ten and twelve psi is the pressure rating for um, the T tape. So where your hose bib is, you're always going to have a pressure reducer um, and a filter. So uh, typically out of an ordinary household um, hose bib, you can get as much as 70 PSI. If you put 70 PSI and just open this hydrant, you're going to blow up this whole system. So you have to reduce the pressure down to the specified rating or pressure rating of the T-tape. So it's going to be between, um, what did I say, 10 and 12 PSI. So just remember that. Okay, so other things that I've heard from, from producers regarding um, uh, drip irrigation is got the clogging in the filter, you get the potential for rodents and birds to peck at the um, hoses, thus causing holes. Um, and then if you have a producer that wants to have a gravity system for this setup, if the minimum pressure is 10 psi, you multiply that by 2.31, you're going to need 23.1 feet of head to be able to operate on gravity. Now a point was brought up by Hernandez Field Office that let's say you didn't have 23.1 feet and so you had 10 feet. Well, you have half of that, so it's probably going to take twice as long to water the uh, 72 by 30 feet of uh, hoop house versus if you had the 23.1 feet it would only, it would take what's specified here nine minutes so there is a chance that you could use a gravity system on this setup but it would take longer because the GPH per emitter would be less so that's something to consider so finally we're almost done um, the main line design in this case we have a 50 foot length of main line. Uh, we're using inch and a quarter. Uh, PE 3508, just standard, uh, 100 psi. 